Oh, mama. Oh, mama. Guess who's got the two chairs and the two beers? And one cat. And one cat and one new sweater. It's us, baby. It's Joy Cat, though. Hey, Joy Cat, welcome to the stream. Welcome She's to like, the never stream. here. She's feeling lappy today. Yeah, we were out yesterday, so. Yeah, for, you know forewarning on this one. We're tired. Yeah. Julia's, for some reason, sitting really far to the left. I think you should move more to the right. I'll be here. Yeah, that's the, the gamers, spot. That's the, the spot. spot. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah, were tired. out last night. We went. I don't know if y'all know about. Oh, sorry, Joy. You moved too much. There's I don't know if y'all know about Sleep No More. The, the play experience here in New York. But it's the play experience. Yeah, that's what it is. You could also call Dave and Buster's a play experience. <laughs> that's a different kind of play experience. This is an experiential play. Yes. Dave and Buster's is a play experience. Someone said, I only know it's horny, which says like a lot about whoever told you that it's horny because there's also like so much cult shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is dark and weird and horny. Uh, basically, if you don't know what it is, it's a play that takes place uh, over like four floors of like this old hotel that has been converted into um, all a giant set for this play. And so once you go in, you're free to explore all around at your leisure mm -hmm. and like look through all the rooms and look through all the stuff. And then the actors are like going around doing the play. And so they'll, you'll occasionally like find them and then you can like follow them around yeah, and, um, and like see what they're doing. It's all really vague and confusing. You're, you're not going to understand what's going on, but it's just like really cool, uh, experience. There's a cool slow motion diner dinner table scene that I absolutely love every time. It's yeah. very fun. Um, but it, there was, you know, we made these plans, uh, last month. So, of course, we got our first snowstorm in two years. <laughs> yep. So, we had to so, go out in the snowstorm yeah. into the city. Yeah. And then um, also the reason we went is because the show is closing after running for like many years. Yeah. It was supposed to be a limited affair originally, but it was so popular that it just kept running for years and years and years. Yeah. And so now we went, uh, we had gone once before uh, several years ago. And for our anniversary yeah. but one of my friends wanted to make like a big group outing to go one more time before it closed that's why we went mm -hmm. and um it ended around midnight and then it took us like two hours to get home mm. and yeah. um it's just is then we didn't sleep very well we were also wearing shoes that were not i broke my my um my hard rule of if the weather is bad, wear appropriate shoes. Yeah. I went on outfits. You we, know. we wanted to look cool instead of being practical. And then we went to sleep no more, which is pitch black. <laughs> you just can't see. It was appropriate, though, because I was wearing my Chelsea boots. And guess what? We were in Chelsea. That's right. The, there's never been a better place to wear Chelsea boots. Yeah. But um, it was it was sick. It was a lot of fun. And now we're tired today, so we're going to try our best. Yes. To stream good. Yes. For you. For and you. for us. Uh, Julia haircut, that's coming. That's Tuesday. In two days. So on Look Wednesday's how long my hair is. on Wednesday's stream, you'll have Julia's new hair. Yes. To contend with. I can't wait to get rid of all of this. It's going to be pretty exciting. It's at the length where if I wasn't chopping off all my hair already, I would have just like gone to whoever had the first available time to just chop it. Yeah. Because it's uh, it's at the length that's very annoying for me. It's gonna feel pretty good. Oh yeah. Getting it all. And pretty cold. Short it up. More Mario RPG win. That'll be Wednesday. Wednesday. Every Wednesday, Mario RPG. Until it's done, which is which apparently yeah. soonish. One or probably a couple more streams two to three more streams of it and then we'll be we will have completed the game yeah i haven't done a big chop of my hair since like high school 
I think. Well, other than the time that I buzzed the side of my head. But yeah. a full chop high school. It's been a while. Yeah. But yeah, I'm excited. And I, I want to say, too, this is not hair related. This is related to when I'm done playing Mario RPG. Because mm-hmm. me and Julia usually alternate when we're doing like a series like yes. a long series so one of us is like doing variety and the other one is doing a long game that way it keeps the interest and also um streams um long playthroughs of a thing tend to drop views so in order to yeah yeah maintain keep kaz's views. hot dog money coming in you know um but it's we're we're thinking we might finally do julia bloodborne as our next long play series so yeah if you've been waiting for that then get excited about it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i think our chat is frozen i did notice that <laughs> are are we frozen <laughs> or is just the chat frozen i don't know the things on the left have been working the things on the right th- this this is frozen this is frozen that's frozen the whole chat's frozen the whole thing is frozen can i refresh this I'd love to refer. Oh, I can't even click on it. Oh, that's bad. This whole list. Can we pop this out? And then maybe. <laughs> I'm going to our stream to see if. Oh, OK. The video is working. Docs chat. There we go. Chat's back. Chat's oh, okay. back, baby. We, we were, our chat was frozen, but we were not frozen for you, which is interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what happened there, but um, I was like really psyched to see everyone be hyped about Julia Bloodborne. And then there was just like, and then there, was <laughs> there was just like crickets and I'm like, <laughs> oh shit. Oh no, we miscalculated. It was pretty good. And I was like, no, there's no way no one would say anything about it. I hope that people are excited for Bloodborne. Yeah, we're going to lug the PS5 in this room. Yeah. Oh, we've been raided. We've been raided. Love sick. Love Thank sick. you. Thank you for the raid. Thank okay, you. Okay, people are excited for me playing Bloodborne. Hell yeah. I'm going to start yeah. it when Jacob's done with Mario. Yes, and I will go back to variety for a while. Mario. We'll see what nasty creature we come up with. I'm leaving Granny Smith behind in Dark Souls. We'll come up with some new horrible creature in Bloodborne. Oh, yeah, we have to. Yeah. But let's do some observing. You want to do some observing? Observe. Be sure to unmute the audio. Thank you. I got to say, too, that because we're so tired today, I've been like, I've been like fucking up. I mean, me too. We both, me and Julia, Julia made coffee wrong. I made coffee. <laughs> um, I put the water in and then I didn't put the coffee in. What level are we doing? Which one did we do last time? We did train. Was that the only one we did? We did one, I think. I think it was just train then. Or did we do... We definitely did train, right? I'm waiting for chat to, to tell me. Chat, what did we do? We only did train. Yeah. You did hotel? I did hotel. Is this two? Train and hotel. Okay, so hospital? I think it's hospital time. Oh, someone got a rotate watches kit. Nice. Um, but yeah, Julia brewed coffee with zero coffee mm-hmm. that was just hot water. And then um, yeah. after that, brewed again and put in the amount of coffee for one cup of coffee. <laughs> for both for, of us. For both of us. So we had very weak coffee. Yeah. And then I went to cook dinner. I was making pasta. And the, the first indication that things were amiss is when I, when I dumped out all the pasta water and forgot to retain pasta water for the sauce. Mm-hmm. Classic mistake, but a forgivable one. A less forgivable mistake is when I took the zucchini that I'd been baking out of the oven and then immediately dropped all of it on the floor. Yeah, that was a, an actual tragedy. And I didn't tell you this, Julia. When I went in there to do the dishes, I had just left the burner on. Oh, my God. I had left the burner on low the that, whole time. That's, that's spooky. <laughs> At least it was on low. True. So the brains, 
The brains ain't braining today. Yeah. Was this here? That's oh, a we get penalties for bad reporting, right? I don't remember. Okay, well, this will take us a few, a few rounds, probably. Yeah, we're not gonna win the, the big one. The big one, the first one. <laughs> we'll win the big one. The stream's gonna be great, y'all. We're gonna win the big one in the end. The big game. There's a cat. Who is that? This Joy. She's scratching. Whoa, she's going up. When are they gonna have a Super Bowl for observation duty? That's a good question. Would they allow teams on that? So that we could go together and I could do nothing to help. <laughs> Breathe. I thought it said beans and I was really excited about it. I'll like hop on the mic and talk about the dumbest shit anyone's ever heard while you're doing all the work. I mean, people love conversations about the dumbest shit. Somebody's got to talk about it. Huge man halftime show. Yeah. Yeah. He just appears. Oh. Julia and Gab Smolder's observation team. Oh my god. That would be a squad right there. I saw someone, it's their first live stream ever. Whoa, welcome. That they've made, so welcome, glad you were able to make it. And they also said something about loving draw detectives. Oh, thank you. I'm still working on it, y'all. You're, you're getting there. I've made good progress over the break. You're getting there. This, this season has truly been uh, Empty? an unthinkable amount of work. Yeah. The desktop audio is still muted. I remember specifically saying we should unmute you. it. I told you. <laughs> Brain not working. And you just didn't. You just didn't do it, huh? It's unmuted now. The game doesn't have many sounds, but... No. You can hear it when I send something to be reported. I saw someone say that Drawtective Season 2 was much better than Drawtective Season 1, and Season 1 was already great. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out exactly what the show... What, like, I don't know. I, I was going to say what the show should be. <laughs> but that sounds like I haven't decided to do that. I'm, like, trying to figure out the balance, basically. The balance. Earth. Fire. Wind. Water. Heart. That's the balance. Yeah. Sure is. If you want to make your show Captain Planet. I haven't been looking at the shelf at all. I haven't even been looking at the screen. Beans. I mean, I think we knew. I said it more so that chat could, like, I don't know, reassure me or something. I mean, chat thinks that it's going to be great. What, the new season? Yeah. Oh, no, I was saying reassurance with the, um... I see. The no need to finish speaking. <laughs> I think the next Just season will be Just gesture wildly. Fun. We're donging. We're donging! I just don't want to disappoint anyone. You know? That's my worry. You're not gonna disappoint anyone. You're frickin' dead. Attention employee, you're frickin' dead. I feel like there's no way for the season to be bad. Yeah. It can only be good. You know why? Because we're all making it, baby. Big mouth. Oh, my favorite show. <laughs> Never seen a single clip of that show. 
<laughs> I think it's like fine. I don't really know anything about it other than that. It, I mean, everyone always rags on how it looks, and I have to. Style. I have to agree personally. Yeah, it's just a style that I, I don't. I don't jive with, as they say. I think you're allowed to rag on how it looks because it was all completely intentionally made that way. Oh, true. Yeah. It's not like someone accidentally made the characters look like that. They did it on purpose and then they kept doing it. I did get upset not too long ago. I mean, you know, relative upset. However upset you get about these things, which is not much. Um, I got upset with the... I was... You were watching something and it was like playing my backlog of games and someone had, or was it that video or was it a different video? Whatever. Someone was talking about Shadow of the Colossus and they didn't like, they were like, I think because it's old, like the controls don't really work and your character's really clunky and your horse doesn't really work. And I was like, that's the point. They did that on purpose. And I was like, in my head was going on a big rant. And yeah. Then, and also out loud. <laughs> I was. I was. And I'm like, I know. Yeah. What are you telling me for? I'm like, they made the horse uncooperative. The horse is his own character. Oh, that's a problem. Got that floor blood dripping yeah. from the ceiling blood. There's, um, I've, I've truly gotten to a point in my life where other people's opinions about a thing I like doesn't really affect how I like it because I just know that it's a difference of opinion, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, okay, like, that's not for everyone. That's fine. Whatever. I can like my stuff. You can like your stuff. Um, but there's some... And I think it has to do with explanation for the reasons why they feel this way that makes me feel like this. But there's some people and they have an opinion and then they start explaining themselves. I'm like, all right. You're just, you're just being contrarian for the sake of being different. And that, that's boring. You're boring. <laughs> yeah. You know? Like when we were watching that video, the dude's 10 worst songs of the year. Oh my God. Yeah. And he was like, song number eight, worst songs of the year, Olivia Rodrigo, vampire. I was like. And I'm like, I just don't go. believe you go away even if you don't like it i don't believe that you believe it's one of the worst songs of the year you know what's the worst song the freaking i'm blue song <laughs> julia hates the bb rexa song so I much hate it. yeah todd in the shadows yeah yeah i was like this is bait yeah you're just saying this I have no problem with people disliking a thing that is like popular. Of course that's going to happen. But the reasons the reasons come out and I'm like, mm, These aren't good enough reasons. You're just making stuff up. The worst song cool. is is Try That in a Small Town. I agree with that. 100%. <laughs> that's definitely one of the worst songs. You're act yes, I I rescind my previous statement. You are correct. I also genuinely loved the original I'm Blue song. Yeah. I was like the perfect age when it came out. And I had, I had the Eiffel 65 CD with that song on it. I, also, I think like... We dongin'. I think the... Um, the difference between the BB Rexa version and the original version. Is that the original version is the original version. Like, it's new, it's original. The BB Rexa one was like, it feels like when you, or, you know, we'll do this on stream a lot, where we'll just have a song stuck in our head and we'll just apply other words to it. Just make up the words, yeah. Because it's not like sung with any kind of skill. I'm blue, yeah, I'm feeling all right. <laughs> it doesn't even. What gets me is that the original song is "I'm Blue" and it's about being sad. It's and like, and then she took that and was like, "What if that song was about having a party 
<laughs> and I'm like, yeah. that's the literally the opposite of what the song was about. Yeah. Why Eiffel, did you sample this song? Eiffel 65 was like, I'm going to write about something that's like really affecting me. And there's going to be like an interesting juxtaposition with like the beat. You know, we're going to try some things. And BB Rexa was like, fun beat equal party. I have no problem with BB Rexa. I don't really know anything about her. I just, this song. I kind of do have a problem with BB Rexa. Is it because of the song? <laughs> No, it's because I feel like BB Rexa is being like, like psy opt into our music I, waves. I agree. Like she just keeps appearing like in everything. She's in all these songs. She keeps showing up. And I don't know anybody that's like, I'm a BB Rexa fan. She does just keep showing up in things. And I'm like, who keeps putting her out here? Why does she keep showing up? Yeah. It does feel like a psy op. See, chat's like, I don't even know who that is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But she keeps being in stuff. She keeps being featured on, like, other songs. Yeah, I don't know any original song by her. I only know songs that she's been featured on. Yeah. And also, she was, like, a, a guest judge in the, or guest coach in The Voice one season or something. Yeah. It does just feel like maybe my problem with her is her, whoever her, like, her uh representative is her agent i'm like stop this is not the way you're just like i feel like i'm i'm having like our product shoved in my face and she's like a human woman and it <laughs> feels a, really she's weird a song cryptid she's a song cryptid yes she's a very hard worker that's what i know her as i don't doubt that she's a hard worker oh yeah probably i just don't think she has any like oh there's a little looker hello Hello, little friend. I think she like is, she, it's okay. Let me think of it the best way I want to des describe this. Okay. Yeah. There are some people who are like, I'm making music because I have a creative impulse and desire that I need to express. And yeah. so I'm going to make music to express that desire and then hope that people like it and that I can find success. And then there are other people that make music that are like, I want to make a successful song that makes money. Mm -hmm. Everything BB Rexa is in or makes sounds like someone who tried to reverse engineer a successful song to make money. Yeah. Or like, I want to be a pop star. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's missing like, the, yeah, the like, stuff underneath. Like, I think if you entered at a different time, what you're saying is that you wanted to be an influencer basically. Yeah, exactly. When, when people say like, I want to be an influencer and it's like, you know, you don't want to be and in, that's like the, the, the surface level is being an influencer. You have to have done something that influences people. <laughs> You need like to reach the level where you're influencing your unique angle to go in and be like, this is who I am. This is me as a person. Oh, now I'm like becoming, oh, this is like when I watched your uh, eye surgery. Oh yeah. Um, then you, then you become like an influencer once you've like established your unique brand. Instead you went in and you're like, I am an influencer and everyone's like, she doesn't even go here, you know? Like, yeah. I don't even know you. Anyway, sometimes that's just how it feels when I see certain, hear certain music. And it doesn't really resonate with us. And that's, that's fine. Maybe it resonates with someone else. That's fine, too. Yeah, I, I don't mind if you like BB Rexa. I want to be clear yes. on that. I'm just trying to get ahead of the comments. Before someone comes at me. No. Well, I, I like talking about things from a, a strong uh, position that I take, yeah. but then I also don't want anyone to feel bad <laughs> Yeah. If, if they were like, oh, I just liked her music. I thought it was fun. And that's fine. Then, then that's completely fine. I don't want you to think that I'm like, you know, you suck. I thought that one song she did with that other band was fine. I thought it was fun. It's, you know, it's not my thing. But I wasn't like, I hate this. Who was it with? Was it Florida Georgia Line? She did do a song with Florida Georgia Line, but you know that they're like, you, you can't say their name in front of me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
when I worked at the pharmacy in Georgia, and this this has been so long ago now, <laughs> just, but I'm just still affected. Sticks in your brain, man. I had to listen to country radio all day, and it was at the time when Florida Georgia Line was all they would play. Like they would play the freaking baby or song and make me want to roll my windows down and cruise that song was on once every 15 minutes uh it was a red solo his, cup too it's red solo cup was on there that's toby keith though yeah and then as soon as that song like got enough play they came out with their other single get your shine on and i'd hear <laughs> that one every 15 minutes and it was so it was you know years i guess two years i don't know how long i worked there Two years? It feels like an eternity at this point. I worked there two to three years, and I had to listen to that song multiple times a day, every day. We should also specify, um, when Jacob says the country radio station, he means like the country pop radio station. Because That's the only one that exists. There's not like an indie country radio station. Oh, all right. Yeah. Country radio station is the I'm worst. from New York. We don't have country, country music radio Country songs you've ever heard in your life. Jacob is still working there. This is all just a dream. Don't say that to me. I've, I've literally like had that dream where I'm like back in the pharmacy and I'm like my whole life in New York was, I just imagined it. I'm looking through the, the you're going to see yourself on one of these cameras. Yeah, it's gonna, I'm going to look in my own eye. Ah, oh, shit. Really? Okay. Oh, I should have pressed Okay, that's okay. What do you need to press? Oh, like well, like what? Yeah, you, you can see the ones that you missed. Right. I don't think I missed anything here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Garbage, cam rolls, soda. This a big jar, lots of little jars. Also, when I worked there, my um, one of my coworkers. I, I genuinely really liked all my coworkers when I worked at the pharmacy. Oh, this was moved. But one of them, she knew that how much I hated those songs. And so she would go around all day going, get your shine on <laughs> at the top of her lungs, like while she was doing other things. That's very fun. And then she was like, don't you love that, Jacob? What the hell? Where'd our camera go? Where's the camera? Anomaly? Anomaly, Anomaly detected. Anomaly. <laughs> Someone wrote the cat. Comes back. <sighs> sometimes, sometimes I just don't know, you know? You clicked off and then you clicked on in the settings and that fixed it last time. In in Streamlabs or OBS or whatever the hell we're using. But why would this even why would this even happen, you know? There we go. Hi. Sometimes I gotta switch to Cam Link 4K and then I gotta switch to Elgato Virtual Camera and it just decides which one that day is the one that works. Yeah. We're back, baby. We're back. And we got our shine on too too aggressively. <laughs> yeah. Was this a different color last time? Whatever. Um, that reminds me of seeing that toilet. <laughs> okay. Well, I just want to know if anyone else has experience with this. Hey, anyone with waist length hair? No, we're not. We're not going back to that well. We're going okay. to a different toilet well. Okay. At my parents' house, my dad, in his bathroom that like he uses in the back, mm -hmm. he's got a his toilet seat is a cushion. I remember those. Oh it's my god. It's a cushion toilet seat. And I think it's the only one I personally have ever experienced. And so I just want to know if anyone else has had experience with the cushion toilet seat. A friend of mine growing up, her bathroom had a cushion toilet seat and it would always go Yeah, that's what his does too. Like the air escapes it when you sit down. Yeah, it made me really uncomfortable. It really seems like it shouldn't be. I don't want anything soft near a toilet other than like toilet paper. No, you it's kind of like in the same level as a carpeted yes, bathroom. Exactly. Like if you had a cushioned toilet seat toilet on top of a carpet, like how cursed could you make your bathroom? Do you remember 
when we were kids, some people had those like toilet seat lid covers that were like carpeted. Yeah, I do you remember that. that. Yeah. Again, my friend with the squishy toilet seat had that as well. And I hated it. It made me really uncomfortable. <laughs> so I don't want anything soft near the toilet. You want everything in the bathroom to be immensely cleanable. Yes. That's what you want. Chat is really, we've unlocked something in chat. Everyone is remembering. They're starting to remember. <laughs> They're entering the matrix. They're exiting the matrix, whatever. Whatever, enter it, exit it. See if I care. Whatever, what's the lore? I mean, the first movie's called Enter the Matrix. No, the video game was called Enter the Matrix. Yeah. And I guess in that game you do, in fact, enter the Matrix. I'm going to ask a series of questions, knowing full well that we, like, fairly recently watched The Matrix. Okay. The Matrix. That's the simulation that everyone's in. Like, yeah. the, the people in the pods are plugged yeah. into, and that's what they're seeing. Yeah. So, like, our world is a simulation. Yeah. So, when they en exit the Matrix, they're in, like, the weird squid tunnels. Yeah. Where everything also looks robotic because we're being controlled by robots or whatever. Yeah, the real world is the squid tunnels. Okay. The the squid tunnels. The squids are machines, though. Was this always two? Yeah, the squids are machines. Chat, was this always two? I'm going to keep going, but... So, but then... So, people built the machines, and then the machines trapped the people? The machines went too far. Yeah. Classic machines went too far situation. The ads are about to start. Okay. At any moment. And we'll do the ads at the end again. Yeah, we'll the subs. The subs, I'm sorry. We'll read the subs at the end of stream. So during this ad break, we'll just chill. We'll just chill. The Animatrix explains this. I watched the Animatrix like multiple times, and I don't remember anything about it, except the one part where the dude is like running. He's like the 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 olympic runner and he like crosses the line and then his muscles go like and his legs get all fucked up i remember that visual really immense really immensely why do i keep saying immensely yeah his knees blow up i don't remember anything about the animatrix other than thinking that the art was cool the art was cool and that it was like vaguely upsetting in the same way that like the Matrix is vaguely upsetting. Yeah. Oh, I also remember that part where they're like in like the, the back alley rundown places and there's all that floating stuff. Squid. It's like kids or something. What? Why'd you say squid? So we were just talking about the cable squids. I'm talking about the Animatrix. It's the Matrix. This is in the Matrix. Not in the real world. I remember the sword fight in the dojo as well. Sword fight in the dojo. Turtle power. Julie's over here just saying squid every time <laughs> anything gets brought up. The cable squid. <laughs> just in case it's relevant. Just like, why would you invent a cable squid? What's the point of that? Well, um, they were supposed to, you know basically like take care of all our needs we should have taken care of that dude's knees so true <laughs> come here miss Because they look cool there's just like some inventions in some movies where i'm like why did people make that why 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 did we decide like i feel like horizon zero dawn right i mean i, I recognize that this is a game with animal wants animal machines but like the machine machines in horizon zero dawn feel pretty like yeah we would need that like a machine that makes the machines and then a machine that repairs the machines automatically and all that stuff but also what's the point of machine animals ride them what's the point do the machine animals, did people make them or are they, I think did people the machines them? make them? 
I can. It says I, Horizon Zero Dawn explains that pretty well, so you must okay. not be remembering some crucial lore. Probably not. I know the tall necks, radar dishes. That makes sense. Some I, of them. I know be the tall animals. necks. I know those tall necks. Jacob and I went to I'm a friends um, with many tall necks. <laughs> friends with many tall necks. Um, Jacob and I went to a Lego store not too long ago, and they had a really cool Lego tall neck. They did, yeah. Yeah, that was pretty exciting. I like Horizon Zero Dawn a lot. It's great. It's fun. It's fun to just pop into. It's a very well realized world. Also, hello to Olive. She's here. Olive is here. Hi, Olive. Yeah. She's a good cat. She's a good cat. Joy is also a good cat. Look at her. Meep, meep, meep. We went to our friend's place the other night. I'm going to go back to the game, but keep talking. And we saw their cats, and their cats are fucking enormous. <laughs> they are, they're really chunky. I mean, they're like overweight cats, but also they're just like physically so much larger yeah. regardless than our cats. Yeah. I always forget how tiny our cats are till I see other cats. Yeah. And then I'm like, you're like 3X. You're 3X Olive. It's true. Yeah, our friend's cats are... They're adorable, though. I mean, one of them wants to rub up on you, but do not touch him. And the other one reminds us a lot of Olive in that she's, like, very talkative. Yeah. And she just wants to cuddle. Yeah. What the hell? Already? Attention. You're freaking up. Man, I just got here. I took a break, and I... Oh, this... Yeah, they're working on getting their cats to a, a healthier weight, but they're they're so they're so cute. They want to munch. Munch. One of the cats, the um, the one that does not want you to touch him, he will demand food. But once he gets the food, he just waits for the other cat to come over to eat, and then he leaves. So he's like calling. He's like making sure the other cat gets to eat. Which is very sweet. It's very sweet. Somebody in chat said that their cat, one of their cats is 26 pounds. Oh my God. Our cats are like eight pounds. Yeah. Each. Yes. Oh, I So your cat is literally 3X. Yeah. 3X one of our cats. This, was there another chair here? Oh, yeah. He's thriving, though. He's big boned. I'm happy to hear he's thriving. I hope he's living his best life. Side table and patient ward notebook is missing. Oh, thank you. You are correct. Yeah, I, noti green, I noticed that. A little green notebook. I, I just happened to notice that, so I thought I'd tell you. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Thanks I for noticing. I observed it personally. Yeah. Because that's sort of the duty I'm on. Yeah. Understood. Observation duty, Understood. so I, I observed it. Yeah. Appreciate all the hard work you do. Thank you. Stretching is important. <laughs> i mean gotta go what do you want from me <laughs> was this always little wheat stocks camroll soda can someone update me on that can someone uh confirm have these always been little leaves i'm seeing i think so Okay. Seeing multiple I think so's. Okay. Maybe. All right. That's I fair. I think. <laughs> I mean, yeah. No one knows for sure. That's all right. 
I don't know. No one else knows. At least none of us know together. <sighs> I like these streams. I hope other people do. It's just... It's just chill. I mean, you know people do like them. That's true. They do pretty okay on the Donna, You don't need to play dumb over there. I just... You don't need to play coy. I, I want to confirm what people you like. You know people like thing. them. They get great viewership. We get we get our highest view. We got twenty two hundred people right now. Whoa! The people love coming in for one of these. Oh, it's Alan Wake. It is Alan Wake. <laughs> Someone had asked earlier, by the way, if we were going to play Alan Wake two. Jacob and I have played Alan Wake two on our own time. We did. It was great. Very fun. When you play Alan Wake, it's just like a lot of um, Alan looking into the camera and being like, the river was an ocean. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, what does that mean? And the next he's like, oh, actually the ocean was a tornado. And I'm like, Alan, I don't understand. He's like, we have to change the tornado to be a puddle. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Alan, what do you mean? <laughs> get in the water and i'm like how is this going to affect anything alan does alan ever wake up i don't know man debatable <laughs> i think i might still be asleep it's i'm not debatable. really sure alan doesn't know what's going on either well he always says it like he's he's he does know what's going on yeah but then he doesn't every twist that happens he's like it all makes sense now. This was actually that. And then it changes and he's like, it all makes of course, sense now. It all makes sense. That was actually this. I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah, that was a great game, though. Love it. That's studio, man. It's one of those games that's solely good from vibes and production quality and like yeah. uh, the originality of like the vision of the creators wanting to make like an unapologetically strange yeah thing we've mentioned this uh in other streams before i just really appreciate any game where you can tell that there's like a lot of love for the game like they got excited about ideas and they put in like little touches that they didn't have to you yeah. know like all of the commercials they put in that um in that game, I just really love. Um, there's and there's just so much like character and life to it. Yeah, I love I that in a game. It. Yeah, that's why people love draw detectives. Oh, that's so sweet to say. Thank you. <sighs> I'm I've having, been, uh, oh. oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, I will say I'm having soon a talk with the first guest of Draw Detectives. The first guest. Really nail down their episode. Uh, and then maybe we'll record it soonish. I'm trying to get it going. It's going to be there when it's there. Okay, it's like Silk Song. True. I just got a text from my brother. Many people are saying Draw Detective Season 3 is the Silk Song of art based Come YouTube D and D series. <laughs> I've been I've been hearing this a lot. Yeah. Brother. Oops. Can you imagine when Silk Song comes out? I can't. I'll lose my mind. I really think it's just going to happen one day. Yeah. But, well, they're, but that's they're like gonna, so exciting. It could be any day. They're going to come out with a trailer and they're like out tomorrow. You're like, what? Yeah. It's going to be like out now. It's yeah. been out for three hours. I literally can't imagine anything. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I bet you can. Go ahead, try. Can you imagine dragons? <laughs> Silk song will appear and I will disappear. <laughs> Same. Me too. I know this is like, this is kind of like a sad thing to say, but I don't mean it in a sad way. Because I think everyone who is a gamer has this thought sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I was watching like a, like a Monster Hunter thing today and the, the director of the series was like, you know, we're working hard to have Monster Hunter Wilds ready for you uh, in 2025. And my first thought was, all right, I guess I have to survive until 2025 now. <laughs> <laughs> the goalpost is shifting. <laughs> shifting the goalposts. And not in a way where it's like, you know, I'm not like happy to be living. Right. More just like, all you right. You have I, extra motivation. I now. really got to like make sure I make it to 2025 so I can, I can play Monster Hunter Wilds. Yeah. And it's only video games that I have that thought about typically. Like I see a release date in a couple years and I'm like, all right, let's, let's remain safe for 2024. So I can play some Monster Hunter in 2025. <laughs> Start taking those vitamins. <laughs> Start doing your stretches. Stretching is important. Dude, maybe that's what Team Cherry is doing with Silk Song. They're like not telling us so that everyone has to keep living their best life. Yeah, they're like, like these are a rough couple of years. <laughs> we yeah. gotta give people a light at the end of the tunnel. That yeah. isn't the light at the end of the tunnel. Everyone's going to be so healthy by the time it comes out in 15 more years. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I haven't sent anything from this room in forever. I feel like I'm missing something. Could just be a chill room. I feel like I'm missing a number of things. I thought these were staggered. Is that true? I'm going to send it because I'm nervous. I don't know anything. I'm stupid. No. Nope. Damn. It's one gone. Ripperoonies. So they're both on the left. Okay. Because you know gonna we're probably going to have to do this again. Sorry. I was going to say early. I mean, I'm interrupting you. No. You're, you're playing the game and I'm interrupting you. Anything I say is an interruption. <laughs> Just like... By itself. But this is this is the, the pact we've made with yeah. these games is that I am the one who plays, you are the one who comes up with the fun banter. Someone asked how Pescatarian was going for me so far. Uh good and bad in that I basically almost immediately put chicken back in the diet. Chicken got back on. I wanted to like go and redraw my New Year's drawing to like take the chicken and like copy it to the other side <laughs> to put yeah. it with the fish. Um, but I've still, I've, I'm still not doing red meat. But without chicken, I was. Oh. All right, there's a few things I want to check. But I was right. having a hard time without chicken. Chicken, it, it, it compromises. Let me try again. Chicken, it comprises. In its many forms, many of the foods that I love. Yeah, yeah. We also now have easier access to sustainable and what I call guilt-free stores, like grocery stores. So we can get chicken from a place that, you know, they're not just like yeah we can get like free range these chickens had a, a pretty chill time hotel raised hotel raised champagne fed yeah sort of chickens like bougie chickens well you know how there's like kobe beef yeah these are like marriott chickens marriott chickens yeah they live in the hotel they're getting room service <laughs> they're in the hot tub yeah Yeah, basically, where, where I wanted to draw the line was like, I don't want to eat any animal that I couldn't personally kill if I had to. Yeah. 
and a, a pig or a cow, I'm just not going to do it. They're just too, they're too smart. They're too much like my cats in many ways. Yeah. And it's like, I'm just not going to be able to do it. A, a fish, like, I'm not even going to hesitate. A chicken is going to be hard. I'm not going to enjoy it and I'm not going to want to do it. He's going to be sad. And I'll be sad to do it, but I could do it if I had to. So that's sort of where I'm at. I remember the biggest culture shock I had when I went to France for the first time was, um, or not the first time. <laughs> Someone happened? said I couldn't kill a proper tuna. It would fuck me up. <laughs> well, I don't imagine I'm like fighting it like 1v1 in, in combat. I mean, like <laughs> if I had fished it out of the water and, and I had it at my mercy, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, culture shock, France. Uh, one of the first times, not the first time, one of the first times I went to France, I stayed with my cousins and they, uh, are from a small town, uh, on the border of Switzerland, I believe it is, or Germany, one of them. Uh, I don't really remember. Um, they, I like had to go help my cousin do like run some errands. And in France, uh, you have still, like, especially, like, small towns, it's, like, you know, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. In fact, you know, France has two different kinds of bakeries, uh, you, and we had to go to both. Um, and I went to the butchers, and we went to go get duck, and the guy, like, the guy nodded, and he went into one door, got a duck went to the other door and then he was there for 10 minutes and like came out with a package and i was like <laughs> like oh no <laughs> oh god i've been forced to face the reality of the things i consume yeah we're so like shielded from that in america where i was like oh my god and from yeah, then on i was like determined to limit the amount of meat that i ate and I do try to avoid eating meat as much as possible, but I also have notoriously had problems, or not notoriously, but I've had fame. I've, <laughs> <laughs> I've had problems. Famous problems. Famous problems. Everyone knows about these problems. With iron deficiency, so. <laughs> I had fame. I had, I had fame once. I've tasted fame. But I didn't have enough iron to keep it. <laughs> uh, sorry, everyone. I'm, my brain's no good of late. See, I've got like in my mind when it comes to like the birds that you eat. Mm -hmm. And this is based on literally nothing other than just like what my brain has told me. Yeah. My brain tells me chickens are neutral. Okay. Ducks are friends. Ducks are my buds. Okay. Geese are motherfuckers. Swans? Swans are also motherfuckers. Yeah. And so it's like, if I were in a, if, if it was like a which one do you shoot situation. Okay, yeah. Where I was in a room with a chicken, a duck, and a goose, and I had a gun, and I had to shoot one. The goose, like, I'm shooting the goose before they even finish the prompt of, like, what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> You're in a Saw-esque trap and the tape's going of <laughs> Mr. Saw or whatever his name is. Yeah. And he's like, you must kill one of these creatures. A goose. I'm, done. Already, I'm already eating the goose yeah. at that time. He's like, I didn't even ask you to kill any of them yet. <laughs> you killed them before I even started playing the tape. How about a turkey? I feel like a turkey doesn't have any idea what's going on. We have a lot of turkeys in our neighborhood. And, you know, they're weird looking. This isn't, this is not my judgment on whether or not I could kill it or how I feel about it. I was just thinking about the fact that I just saw like a gaggle of turkeys. They are weird looking. They're, they're bizarre little creatures. And Ben Franklin wanted our national bird to be the turkey. What? What did I miss? I'm so bad at this already. What did I do? Oh, uh, this? 
Okay. I was just thinking about since you brought up Saw. Mm hmm. We were watching Northern Lion play at Cine 2 Nerdle. And he made that connection with uh, Carrie Elwes. Elwes? Yules? Yules. Carrie Yules. His name is spelled Elwes. It is, yeah. yeah. He made that connection with El Carrie Yules and Saw. And you were like, Carrie Yules is in Saw? And yeah. I was like, yeah, he's he's the the saw guy he's mr saw <laughs> yeah. he's the guy who uses the saw i mean he's not jigsaw and that i was confused when you had said that and we were watching it because i thought you meant that he was jigsaw but he's like the dude who has to use the saw in saw that's wild he went from the princess bride to that i mean i know he had like a bunch of things in between but i was like he couldn't possibly be any more in saw the movie's like named after him basically You've heard it as Elways. What was the director connection we made? Oh, um, the director, he worked with um, Tim Burton, but did Coraline. That's what it was. Henry Selleck. Yes. Yeah. When we were trying to figure out why Tim Burton was not involved in Coraline. Yeah. Because it was Neil Gaiman and Henry Selleck who I yeah. think probably deserves more credit yes. for Tim Burton's shit. Success, yeah. I agree. Notebook? Not Tom Selleck. Not Tom Selleck, no. But Tom Selleck probably deserves more credit, too, just for being sort of a handsome guy. I mean, I think that's the only thing he gets credit for. Yeah, and he deserves more, I think. Yeah. Let's up him even more. Click the booty. It's pronounced Elwes? I was right? I gotta look this up. Find a video where he's saying his own damn name. I'm gonna do it. How to pronounce... Pronounce? Pronounce. That's Sean Connery Googling. How to pronounce. This, how to pronounce Carrie Yules. Let's see. Carrie Elwes. Carrie Elwes, baby, my <laughs> son. Well, let's see. He might be saying it himself in this video. Let's see. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Like watch on okay, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> this is great content, Jacob. I thought he was going to say his own name in this. Does he not? <laughs> okay, wait. This has, says it has how to pronounce it correctly. You're looking at how to pronounce the name of this English actor this and writer. Indeed. We're going to be looking at how to say more interesting and often mispronounced celebrity names too. So make sure to stay tuned and consider subscribing for more learning. He is particularly famous for his roles in movies such as The Princess Bride or Robin Hood in 1993 or The Crush or Saw. Uh -huh. How do you say his name? Harry Alwes. Al Wes. Al Wes. Pretty straightforward once you know Harry. Pretty straightforward once you know. Why is this man our go-to on how to pronounce <laughs> anything? You think he doesn't know? He's got the SEO on lock. That man is changing language. <laughs> when you have to write a 2,000 word essay. <laughs> <laughs> Kerry Elwes. Known for his roles in the... So... And the Princess Bride. I'm glad I know now. Okay. Because that was how I was saying it, but then I, it seemed wrong to me. Yeah, well, I had always heard Yules or whatever. You'll add. Carrie Elwes. Carrie Elwes. You have to say it in that candor, too. <laughs> Who let him be our guy. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He let himself be our guy. He found a niche and he filled it. Okay. This guy again. It's the same freaking... He's a fucking girl boss. <laughs> He's a girl boss. Oh, 
What was that thing that um, Megan the Stallion said on New Year's Eve? Her like New Year's resolution <laughs> oh, was like step on more bitches' necks or something. It was like keep my boot on these bitches' throats or something. That's what it was. Yeah, it was something like that. <laughs> it was so freaking funny, and because she said it so fast, they couldn't bleep her. Yeah, we were watching like the I don't know CNN. Was it CNN? It's the um freaking the one with the, Anderson. Yeah, Anderson Cooper and Cooper Andy Cohen. And Andy Cohen new year's eve show and then they just had like clips of celebrities saying what their new year's resolutions were and she was like keep my boot on these bitches throats i was like whoa i love megan the stallion um oh that was nikki that oh, was nikki minaj. minaj my bad sorry either way it was sick it was it was so good the other thing i really enjoyed was um they had called in to talk to John Mayer, who was in Japan at a cat cafe. Or no, he was at a cat bar. And there are just all of these cats roaming around him. And, I mean, Andy Cohen and Anderson Cooper are several shots in at this point. And, oh. Little roof man. And, um... He's checking the shingles. <laughs> And Anderson Cooper is just crying with laughter about the cats yeah. floating around. And John Mayer, like, as the great Suzo said, was completely straight faced the whole time. Yeah. He never like smiled or laughed the entire time. And it was like, it was like building. The humor of it just kept building. The longer he didn't laugh and the longer Anderson kept laughing. And they kept trying to ask him questions, but he would just turn and talk to the cats. At some point, he just looked at a cat and went, Otachi wa uh, uh, oh, yeah, Tamagotchi. Yeah. <laughs> Tomodachi. Tomodachi. Not Tamagotchi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he whispered to the cat, like, like, I am your friend in Japanese. <laughs> Anderson is, like, trying to get off camera because he's laughing too hard. Uh, this is really funny. Yeah, that was getting me. <laughs> Watashi wa Digimon. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ooh, bathroom void. Okay. Yeah, that was uh that was fun. At first I was like, why are we watching this? Because also it was like I don't know. The en the energy was very bizarre. Uh, and then they cut to their, like... There's always, like, a woman in the field. It's never, like, a dude who's out there. It's always some lady. But they cut to the lady. And she's being held up by several shirtless men. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, yeah. That woman who was, like, in New Orleans or something. Yeah. I did not figure out what was going on with her. It was wild. Overall, I don't recommend watching that entire programming block like we did. They do but, not they do not have enough content to fill that space. We like, will watch it again all. next year though. <laughs> but the a couple parts that are really bizarre uh are are pretty fun. I feel like um we kept saying like that we could do a better job like filling the time yeah than a lot of the things they had on there they also just like i don't know they didn't like have the energy or the questions ready or like anything they would just like have a guest on and be like how's your day and the guest would be like vaguely drunk which was its own energy yeah i did really like um the woman from somebody somewhere was there. She came in. She came in with just like alcohol and a brown paper bag. Yeah. Which is if very only funny. we knew her name. <sighs> I don't know her name though. I'm bad at names. It's got to be Catherine. Zeta Jones. Somebody somewhere all at once. Not, no, not that one. Or not that at all. She's also a comedian. Not BB Rexa. Not BB Rexa. Not Catherine Hepburn. 
someone's gonna say it although i am surprised bb rexa wasn't there and i'll be here oh yeah and all the musical performances were bad save one of them yeah freaking hootie of the blowfish he was singing the most shit ass song i've ever heard in my life he wrote like the it's like if you told an ai to generate a country song based on the top 100 country songs yeah bridget everett thank you that's her name yeah Dar that. darius rucker the song he sang was fucking so bad it was pretty rough it was literally just like drinking a beer sitting in the sun putting on my sandals and having some fun and everyone in the, cr the crowd was like going crazy and then freaking uh adam levine was there and he sang like two lines and then got the crowd to sing the rest and then when he came back to sing more he tried to like ad lib and it wasn't working yeah, he did one of the worst vocal runs I've ever heard in my life. He was like, ah, yeah, ah. yeah, it was, it was, it was a weird one. I got to look up the lyrics to that Darius Rucker song. Cause what I sang is like, you're going to be surprised at how close it is. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you're not all that wrong. Who, there was also like a, a female star that was there who sang also a song that was very like similar to the Darius Rucker song and I was like what the hell is this he's looking up the song I'm trying to find it is the song called have a good time I think it is called have a good time it can't oh my be God. right ah! oh he's doing a steppy sorry that I clicked like your chest I like that noise. Would he write a song called Have a Good Time? So you had a good time. <laughs> Have a good time lyrics. Why wasn't that on freaking Todd in the Shadows worst 2023 songs? This isn't even the one. Instead, Todd in the Shadows was like, you know that song everyone loves? Actually, it's bad. It's a different song. <laughs> what? Oh, Beers and Sunshine. That's what it's called. That's what it is. Something's okay. wrong with the vending machine? Okay. Get ready for this chorus, everyone. Is it? It's literally Beers and Sunshine, Bonfires and Summertime, <laughs> Back Porch Nights in South Carolina. Ain't nothing finer than me and my girl striking up a little lighter. <laughs> I mean, it and, has... then, and then listen, he gets a little political here, but I okay. think you're all going to agree with this message. All right. Okay. Because everybody's down in a world gone crazy. Don't know how to fix it, but I think maybe turn on the good times, turn off the TV. Yeah. The only BS I need is beers and sunshine. <laughs> oh, God so true i mean the problem i'm having with the song oh you know what's wrong is i think these chairs are too small he's spitting um my problem with that song really <laughs> is the same problem i have with the bb rexa song which is that it's just like generic and boring it's just nothing were there chairs here before All right, well, we're two strikes down, y'all. Check out these lyrics. Okay, This please. is going to make you emotional. All right. Going to call my girl and say, let's get our friends and hit the lake. Grab a boat and get to floating. A little buzzed and a little toasted. We're going to hang and have a little fun now. Oh, yeah. Flying high like we'll never come down. We're going to go until we run out of beers and sunshine. <laughs> First of all, you should not be getting into a boat if you're a little toasted and you're a little <laughs> buzz. A southern man's fight song. All right, well, we did better that time. This guy writes songs like he's messaging the group chat. Oh, camera malfunction corridor. Ooh. Oh, you're going to do it. You're going to get it. That song killed the run. 
Yeah, probably so. I was trying to think of that lady's name. The other act that I, that and she was singing that freaking Miranda song. Miranda Lambert. Miranda Lambert. She was singing a song that was really boring. Yeah. All the songs are boring. They're always like, we have to have a performance that's non-offensive. And then they, <laughs> they have freaking Nicki Minaj say she's going to put her boot on some bitch's throats. <laughs> uh. I didn't see Green Day's performance, no. But I heard that they said something anti-MAGA. Wow. And that a lot of people were like, can we please leave the politics out of the song American Idiot? <laughs> Meanwhile, I love Try That in a Small Town. <laughs> Can we please not get into politics when we listen to the song American Idiot? I love when um, MAGA people learn that a band that was their favorite band and sung about how horrible like white supremacy is actually meant them. And they're like, no, what? They got political no, now. No, dude, no way. I was a fan of the politics before when it wasn't when it wasn't about me. No. Everyone's talking about people being mad at Rage Against the Machine. Oh yeah, always. God, that was so funny to me. It's like, it, it really opened my eyes to the fact that some people truly listen to music without hearing any of it like well, they don't analyze they don't hear any of the lyrics they don't read any of the lyrics they don't analyze any of the lyrics well i don't even think it's that i think that they one either don't have media comprehension or two are not very self-aware so they're like the machine is actually is whatever i don't like is whatever i don't <laughs> like exactly i mean that's 100 percent what i mean you know yeah, I think that is that is correct. Like, because they're so programmed to be us versus them with no further critical thinking that they're like, if you are not with me, you are against me. Um, and, and so, like, when the machine, when someone's like, actually, the thing that you support is bad, and they're like, no, you're bad. <laughs> Rage against what I don't like. <laughs> I also think that a lot of um, people get into Rage Against the Machine when they're like 14 and they're like, this is my parents actually. This is deep. They're the machine. They're the machine is my parents who in my in my 14 year old braid is conflating with the man. And the man is whoever is opposed to my current thought process. When Rage Against the Machine sang Rally Around the Family with a pocket full of shells, they're talking about my older brother who keeps using the blue shell on me in Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> they mean pistachio shells. Like when my uncle eats pistachios and he puts the shells in his pocket. My uncle's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, how's the observation going? I mean, I failed many times, but we're getting there. I believe. We'll get there eventually. I believe it will happen. <laughs> My favorite uh, thing that always comes up when, when you talk about like people who misunderstood Rage Against the Machine uh, I love when people bring up quotes from Rage Against the Machine songs that just make it so obvious what they're talking about. You know? Like, like someone... Like, like almost all of them. Yeah, well... Some of those that work forces are the same that burn crosses. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's literally... I mean... Right there. It's, uh, it's, it's very obvious. 
but they're like actually in this context burning crosses is metaphorical so it means like when the democrats try to be inclusive of other religions thus taking away space for me somehow uh and that's the burning of the crosses that i think it means you're like what they don't think that far. No. You, you thought you thought way too far. Yeah, but they I didn't think, that's think about like it at all. The kind of excuses that they can come up with. The only part of the song they heard is "fuck you, I won't do what you tell me." That's the only part they heard. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. Fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. And then that person then uh, joins the army or becomes a cop, and I'm like, that's that's all you have to do in your job, really. That's literally your job description. <sighs> it is pretty cool that Rage Against the Machine is like... They were a pretty like once in a lifetime band. Like yeah. the combination of those members like specifically having um, Zach De La Roca as the vocalist is a once in a lifetime vocalist, but him coupled with Tom Morello as a guitarist mm. and he's a once in a lifetime guitarist because nobody else on the planet plays like him in that way. Right. And then um, the bassist and drummer are just incredible musicians. <laughs> what, was, what was the song we were talking about last night when we got off the subway? Oh, it was, I, so I had a song stuck in my head yesterday, and I always thought that the song was done by Creed, but it was actually done by... It's the baby. Ghost baby. Bow, bow. What was the band? Our Lady Peace, I Our think. Our Lady Peace, yeah, and you had Are they said... the ones that, that sing that song that's, if I could, then oh. I would, I'll go wherever you will go. Is that them, or is that a different band? That's not them? People are saying, no! That's The Calling? Fuck, man. That's Lifehouse? Nobody knows who it Nobody is. Nobody knows! It's not Pearl Jam. It's The Calling. It's not Creed. People are saying that's Creed. It's not Creed. It's not Creed. It's not, I don't think it's Lifehouse either. I think it is The Calling. Well, anyway, we were saying basically that, or, you know, Jacob was making the point that the people in that band were like, what makes Pearl Jam good? It's when the guy does a ha yeah. noise. I mean, there was a whole group of bands that thought what made Pearl Jam good was going ha 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 Kind of like Cher. And I was saying to Julia that Eddie Vedder is the only one who gets to do that because that's literally how that motherfucker talks. Yeah. He sounds like Boomhauer when he's talking. <laughs> yeah. And he's just singing the exact way he speaks. Everyone else is trying to sound like him. Jacob and I, you know, we talked about before that our TV now comes with a bunch of live TV channels. And one of them is essentially what music channels used to be, which is just like just constantly playing music videos and then some commercials. Um, but we have a rock station and they like have them in chunks. So it's like different kind, it's a different sub genres. Oh my God, man. Why am I so bad? Um, basically, they have different subgenres in the main genre. Um, and man, some of the rock ones, you're like, you don't understand what made your source material good. You've just said, what's cool is this, like, is screaming and this exact guitar tone, and that that is what makes this yeah, band yeah. that i'm in, i'm influenced by interesting yeah a lot of bands take like the surface level 
parts of a, a genre and then just try to like do them again. Yeah. They're like, this is the cool bit. There has to be another one if they were warning me. I just want to say too, to be clear, I, I love Pearl Jam. They're one of my favorite 90s bands. Maybe my favorite 90s band. I do love Pearl Jam too. I think 10 is a perfect album start to finish. Pearl Jam has the first song that ever made me cry. I'm assuming it's the one about, you know, the one. Yeah, the car accident one. Yeah, the car accident one. That was the first time I ever cried because of a song. I think that song's a cover. Is it? Mm hmm That's interesting. I did not know this. You could probably tell by the... Because it sounds like a song from like the 50s or something. Mm. And I think it is. I think I have not heard that song since I was like, I don't know, 16. <laughs> but Linkin Park exists. 1999 counts, right? Fair. Listen, I loved Linkin Park. I don't think they exist in the same echelon in my mind. No, they were like cool and unique. Yeah, they, they were cool, but kind of like bad good. I mean, they were one of my favorites. Yeah, I, 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 love, I love them. I love them, but in a different way. Yeah. Oh. Is this a camera malfunction or a distortion? It's not a camera malfunction. That's when the camera's gone. Uh, well, I messed that one up. I started listening to the Mars Volta on Jacob's recommendation and deloused in the comatorium made me cry. Did it make you cry for good reasons? <laughs> for a lot of people, I think the Mars Volta could make them cry for a, for a bad reason. It's too overwhelming. But I think deloused in the comatorium is another, another 10 out of 10 album. Linkin Park and Dragon Ball Z are inseparable pieces of media to me. <laughs> I totally get that. Oh, absolutely. Also, the song Dragula by Rob Zombie is synonymous with Ava in my head. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. The Asuka Fighting the Angel series uh, is uh, set to Dragula in my head forever. That's such a funny song to put that to. Well, it was a remix of Dragula, so... Okay. Dragula remix. Yeah. I always associate the song Yesterday by the Beatles with Cowboy Bebop. That one was a really good because music Because of that video. one AMV. That won like a bunch of awards, too. And I have a distinct memory of showing that AMV to my mom because <laughs> I thought it was so cool. That's the, and such her a teen thing only response thing. was saying, I don't like it when cartoon characters smoke cigarettes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I think I've told this story before. Yeah, yeah. That's okay, though. It's which is one of those things that, like, I was so personally offended that she had nothing else to say about it. Uh-huh. That it just, like, remained in my memory for the rest of my life. I remember when I was a kid... I mean, I think all kids do this, but you like try to convince your parents to like buy you something and you like your reasons for it are really dumb. Uh, you realize when you're older, but like the Nintendo 64 had come out and I was playing it a hell of a lot at Dan's house. And I, I was obsessed with Star Fox 64. And I only got to play it at Dan's house because I did not have a Nintendo 64 because uh, my parents didn't really buy me video game systems until, like, the next iteration of the system came out. Because, like, then the price got dropped and all these things. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, I had borrowed Dan's N64, and I'd put in Star Fox, and I, like, sat my parents down, and I was like, look how realistic this is. <laughs> look at the graphics on this. Are you this. seeing this? And they were like... Uh, <laughs> that okay. game did look great for its time. Oh. oh, there's a guy. Hello. It did look great for its time, but you look back on it now and you're like, oh, God. 
I remember bringing my great grandmother. Oh my god! Into the room to show her the background art in Yoshi's Island. <laughs> that one has a style to it, though. Because I thought it was so pretty. Yeah, that's fun. And she she did say that it was pretty. She humored me on that one. To be fair to me, though. As an adult, I think Yoshi's Island has one of the most like beautiful and distinct visual styles yeah. of like any game of its era. So I agree. So I was right, is what I'm saying. <laughs> um, my uh, most horrible ex, who I've I've mentioned a few times, had a grandmother who was uh, who ruled. She was awesome. Um, every time I went to his cousin's place, she lived with his cousin. And she would be in her room playing the Famicom. Oh, hell yeah. Every single time without hesitation. And then we had discovered that the bootleg... Uh, we, I had a, a video game system that I've brought up before who that looks like a penguin. And there's cartridges you load into the back of the penguin. And then it has like a thousand one games on it. Um, you could put it in the Famicom and it would work. The, the cartridge? The cartridge would work in the Famicom. That's wild. So we just like bought a few of those and like gave it to his grandmother to play Famicom. So she games. would have like 2002 games yeah. to play and most a lot of, them of bootleg are repeats. versions of Mario. <laughs> yeah. She liked it though. I think she liked it. I don't know. She didn't speak that much English. Although I think she spoke more than she let on. Me and my... Oh! oh. Uh, if you have a complaint, you can tell the office over there. Yeah. Me and my friend in high school would play through the um, Mario Kart Double Dash, like all cups mode. Mm -hmm. While listening to um, System of a Down's Toxicity. Oh my god. The, the album, not the song. I mean, the yeah. song's on the album, but... Is that the one with aerials on it? Yeah, we listened to the whole that album just album like start to finish over and over again while playing Double Dash. And so I, to this day, I always associate Mario Kart with, with toxicity. It's funny. Um, I, well, I guess it's a habit, but like there are some songs that I have such like a strong memory that's associated with it or like such, such a strong reaction to. Um, Jacob knows this, but the Sugi Ross album with, um, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation because I never knew how to pronounce any of their songs. But Are you talking about Svefan G. Englar? Yes. <laughs> That's that how one. I always say it. Uh, that oh, me? One. I'm just listening to Svefan G. Englar. <laughs> that one, yeah. Um, that will put me to sleep immediately. S just so fast. The second it turns on. We're going to name our first son Svefan G. Englar. <laughs> They're going to be like, oh, are you Icelandic? And I'm going to be like, no, French, actually. Oh, hello. Can you, like, leave the premises, please? Can someone get this fella out of here? He's checking the smoke detectors. Oh, it's Ali. Hello. Someone asked if we had seen the, um, what Pokemon is Julia drawing over the poker rap video? And I have seen that. I actually shared it with the team the other day. I it's haven't watched so it yet. It's so good. It's really funny. It I, also made me want to do another one of those episodes. I saw Nathan say it was really good, and then, but I didn't watch it. And Nathan also pointed out that the fan content this year is already like. Already you know, been excellent. Hey. Yeah. Superb. We got the, the deep blue ink. Of the um, Imagine a Crab. Yes. Which uh, must have taken a lot of work on his part. Because oh, yeah. that's a, that was a long bit. You had to really... <laughs> you had to really go for it. No, come on! I thought I was doing well! It's over. What did I miss? I'm so bad at the missing object ones. Well, I'm going to run the, the, the ads now. The objects are small. 
We're going to run the ads now. That's the problem. That is the problem, yeah. Yeah, let's run the ads. Uh, three minutes of ads starting right now. Hello, sweetie. Unfortunately, Olive got in your lap right when it's time to water Mr. Plant. No, it's time to pet Olive. It's time to pet Olive. It's always time to pet Olive. I can't water Mr. Plant right now. I got a little kitty. I got a little kitty. And we're not going to see them tomorrow because we're going to be recording Drawfee. Oh, yeah, you just reminded me. I got a text from my brother that I need to respond to. Back to recording tomorrow. Got to get some new 2024 Epis. The next several Epis you'll get will be old, previous year recorded Epis. We're going to see what the vibe of 2024 is. Yeah. I hope we make some bangers. Oh, you are we going to do that stream that you talked about tomorrow? The awards? Oh, well I didn't I didn't do it. I didn't make it. Do you want me to make it tomorrow? Well, it, I don't it takes a while actually to do. Oh. Maybe I can do it tomorrow morning. We'll see. I, I did want to do the Drawfee Awards, but I didn't, I didn't make it. <laughs> I simply didn't make it. Yeah. I forgot. I guess maybe I'll try to do it tomorrow morning. Okay. Only if you want to, man. It's pretty fun. It is fun. I do like it. You could come up with the, the awards and then I can make it the file. You could send me the things you want to include. Why would I make you do it? Well, I'd make it while you're doing the research. No, that doesn't make sense. I'm right. not, I, listen, I'm not giving you work. <laughs> I'm never going to give you work to do ever. I would sooner die that. than give you work. Are we going to play Lethal Company on stream again? Probably so. Yeah, probably. Now that everyone's back home. We got to, you know, work out the time with um, Ansta and, and Doig in India. That's true. Since we all have wildly different time zones. Yeah. Just make it ugly. Yeah, maybe I'll just make an uglier version than last year. Julia trying to steal work from other people. Listen. I'm in a rare mood where I don't want to go back. So I'm not trying to do anything. <laughs> I just, when someone's in a pickle, I try to help. That's your problem. Yeah, it is my problem. What you should say instead is, is there a fucking problem? Is, damn, good luck. Yeah. I hope you can get it done. Or don't get it done. Either way. Yay, Julia resting. I'm still doing a lot of draw tactics work. I just. Yeah. Yeah, Julia's been doing lots of work. Yeah, I'm doing a lot. All right, full focus time. This is the run. This is the run. I That's not to it. say that you can't like, you know, that I, I, I won't still vamp. I just. Everyone remain silent. No, for no, this run. that would feel so awkward. So that Julia can focus. Full focus mode. Have you ever seen the videos of the um, the puzzle championships? I don't the think puzzle, so. The puzzle competitions? I don't think so. It's intense. What sort of puzzle? Like jigsaw puzzles. They got jigsaw puzzle competitions? Yeah. They'll have like teams of four people and then they'll like, you know, whoever can do the puzzle first. They got competitions for everything these days. Sure do. Whatever happened to just doing it for fun, you know? <laughs> uh, living expenses went up and pay didn't. I don't see how that's related to puzzle competitions. 
the the prize money you're telling me they're like the best way for me to make money in this economy is to do jigsaw puzzles incredibly fast (laughs) (laughs) i've done the math i've done the calculations this is the best way for me to make money yeah man gotta monetize those hobbies side hustle i'm such a fan of not monetizing a side hustle nom nomatizing Nomatizing. I like to nomatize my side hustle because it's cooking. Do you get it? Mm-hmm. So I nomatize it, like eating. Yeah. Do you get it, everyone? <laughs> you do make YouTube videos for a living, Jacob. Yeah, but I didn't approach that. I approached that knowing it was not a good idea. I didn't look at the economy and say, this is the best way to make a living. Yeah, I fell into it. I looked, well. I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, I don't want to work at the pharmacy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, which made you make comics, really. I simply must. Oh my God, calm wow. down. Calm down. Fern's a little excited. Okay, that was a little intense. Hope everyone's okay. Everybody, check your uh, check your buddy. What did I do at the pharmacy? I was mostly just a cashier, but I also did some like medicine deliveries to some old folks' homes. That's nice. I enjoyed that part. That feels like you're actually helping someone. Sometimes I went out and got lunch for everyone. I enjoyed that part. Did you do the pill counting stuff? I did a little bit of that. I did some like pharmacy tech work that I wasn't supposed to do (laughs) because I wasn't a pharmacy tech. But it was a small local place, so... There's only like a few people that work there. Sometimes I wish I had a job in helping people because I always liked doing jobs like that. I always liked all of my volunteer things. I guess I could just volunteer, but I have so much work that I don't really have spare time to do so, which kind of sucks. Um, anyway, I wish I had like a, a job that was helping someone and then i remember that most of those jobs uh unfortunately pay you basically nothing that sucks that shouldn't be how that goes and i'm always arguing that the job that we do is helping more people than you could feasibly help in person just i hope it's helping just in less uh you know tangible ways look at olive She's still dangling? Yes, she is. She's dangling. She wants to fight. (laughs) There she goes. Yeah, she's going to fight Joy. Um, I know how much I think the YouTubers I like are helping me mm. on like a day to day. Oh, speaking of helping, uh, my money management stream went up finally. Uh, so I hope that's helpful to people. Oh yeah, you should watch that on Drop the Extra if you got any... If you want to know more about personal finance. I saw a lot of people talking about how money stuff gives them anxiety so they don't want to watch it. And I will say that's very fair. But I will say that as someone who is extremely anxious about money constantly, knowing more about how to handle money and like what I should be doing with money has helped my anxiety about money quite significantly. Yeah, very true. It just, it gives you, it like empowers you to do more. You have to like take the shame or take the baggage off of it as much as you can. Obviously I know that it's tough for a lot of people. It was tough for me. Um, And 
you have to just like look at it as like these are the things that are helpful avoiding the thing is not helpful and it, it can make your situation worse to avoid knowing about the thing yeah there's like a um i was gonna say like a bell curve but i don't think it's a bell curve okay is the type if you have a graph that's like knowledge about money stuff and anxiety about money stuff your anxiety is like at the peak when you know like nothing and then when you start learning a little bit your anxiety like goes up even higher at the very start yeah. you're like this is all too much it's overwhelming i'm never gonna understand also i have no money and i've been doing it wrong and oh god yeah. it's too late to start now yeah and then like the next phase is like as soon as you start understanding like anything about it mm -hmm. the anxiety like dips dramatically because it's like okay i have like a plan like i know what i'm supposed to be doing yeah not just like going willy-nilly yeah which is what i was doing for a long time well i feel like i just didn't know anything i was like i put money in bank and it good that 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 all i can do um and i i could have been doing more you know anyway that class is available i don't want to talk about it now so i don't stress anyone out but but check it out if you want it's very low pressure i'm not telling you what to do with your money i'm just telling you what certain terms mean and what are options for you um but don't you know don't feel like i'm gonna shame you name you and shame you for you know whatever um i just i'm just trying to give you info to make your situation maybe a little more comprehensive that's my goal hell yeah hell yeah that's on the Drafi extra channel it's in the live section which is uh hidden <laughs> draz has linked to it if you thank you draz if you want to watch it I have that song stuck in my head still. If I could, the one by The Calling. Not Our Lady Peace. I always thought Our Lady Peace was a little more... Um, <laughs> rough and tumble, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. All I know is that I had a friend who listened to them and she had kind of a punky vibe. I would not describe them as rough and tumble. Okay. First of all, they're Canadian. Nothing's rough and tumble in Canadian, except for hockey. They get it all out in hockey. Their big hit was somewhere out there. I don't think it's the same one from like an American tale. Okay. Somewhere out there someone's in the chat by the way said that they have a lot of money anxiety but they still watch my class and it was very helpful to them and i'm glad to hear it i try you know i say i try not to be judgmental i just it just sucks to not i've always hated when someone's asked a question and then someone's like you don't know that i'm like all right well i'm never gonna ask you a question again it just like makes you not want to ask anyone anything you know I'm oh, sorry, Jacob's on a phone call. I gotta listen to the song. He's on a phone call with I Our Lady Peace what it or whatever. Like. Oh yeah. I feel like I'm missing something. I remember this one. <laughs> I gotta hear the chorus. What am I missing? That's fine. Do we have one, two, three, four, five? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Six. I remember listening to this song on Star 94. Well, Star 94. Oh, is that that a was the radio, radio station? station that existed at the time in Georgia. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's having his own experience over here. Oh, yeah, this one. Thank you to the person who pointed it out in chat. It's the one where he goes, I know you're out there, somewhere out there. I have no idea what you're talking about. You're, you're gonna falling have to play back me to me. The star that I can't see. Yeah. I know you're out there, somewhere out there. I, I don't know if I know what the song is. Nah, you know it. If you ever listen to Star 94, you know it. <laughs> I don't think I ever told you, but... Um, one of the people I dated was a DJ for his college. <laughs> and he played like indie music. Um, but his, his time slot was like two in the morning until like six or something. So if I wanted to listen to the cool music he had, I would have to be up that late. And this was like in college, early college. I was like, I don't, I can't, I can't be doing this. I gotta go to sleep. I got class. I got class. Come here, buddy. Hi, Joy. Come up. It was easy to stay up that late if you didn't go to your 8 a.m. history class and then nearly fail it <laughs> on your first semester of college, oh, no. losing your scholarship. No, I took college very seriously. I got the scholarship back the next semester. That's good. Hi, Joy. I had to, I had to fuck up. I had um, gifted student syndrome where I didn't think I had to work at all in order to get A's. And then I realized that I was not going to get A's. I was going to get D's. <laughs> D's nuts. No! <laughs> I was determined to um, graduate college on time with good grades. I wasn't aiming for like perfect or great grades. Um, mostly I wanted to leave college with a job, which is what I did. Um, but I was determined to graduate on time so that I didn't have to pay for any more college. Yeah, for sure. So I attended every class I could in case, because I was always sick. I was underweight at this time. So I was sick, like, constantly. And uh, I only used my sick days for when I was, like, or I only skipped class when I was really sick, because all of my classes were really small. Like, so small they would take attendance, you know? And if you missed three, you would fail the class. <laughs> FIT was strict. Oh, we're missing a plant. Yeah, 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 yeah. <sighs> plant, plant, paper. My mom's a professor. She explicitly said she wouldn't pay for any classes that started before 10 a.m. That is very smart. Yeah. I had to learn my lesson the hard way. Except I never really did learn my lesson because I always... Um, chose my classes way too late oh like you're supposed to do it like as soon as possible but i because i'm not like other girls i waited until the last <laughs> minute and so i just took like the dregs of whatever trash was remaining i think you're very much like other girls i'll say well i was way. not like the other girls that were getting the best classes by being on top of their shit i'll tell you that much that was me i, I, I was like the other girls who were taking the detritus we had um our classes were given to us in blocks so you had to choose like a block of classes and then you signed up for your other your man because it was a state school so you had to take like mandatory state classes um like a science a gym a math yada yada um then you had to pick those on top of the block uh, and the blocks always went up at midnight, so me and my friends would stay up at midnight, and we would all be talking, like, on, I don't know, I don't know what instant messenger we were using at the time, but we were all talking. And we were like, go, 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 which one are you taking? Let's take A! Um, but FIT gave me so many classes, I'd be in from 9 in the morning until 9 at night, so, you know. 
But I did it. Truly nightmarish. And I commuted because I wanted to save that money. Commuted took me about an hour to get to school every day, an hour home. So I would get, I would leave at eight in the morning and then, or seven in the morning, because sometimes my classes would start at eight in the morning. And then sometimes I would get home at 10, 1030. Because then I would walk from the train station home. <sighs> God, I'm not doing that anymore. I was going to say that I would simply die. But that's not true. No. I, I would do it if I had to. You get used to it. I would just not be pleased. You find some like fun things to do in that. Like I played, uh, when I played uh, Spirit Tracks, have fond memories of playing Spirit Tracks. Is this clock going backwards? Is this a problem? Is it always going backwards? It should not be going backwards, I don't think, personally. Nice, I did it. I played Spirit Tracks. I played a lot of video games on that commute. Listened to a lot of fun, fun albums. I just want to acknowledge real quick before I forget that someone in chat had asked me if I had ever listened to Mass of the Fermenting Dregs. And that's just, that's just a rare one to be asked about. So I wanted to acknowledge that, yes, I do listen to them. That's a, that's a Dark Souls item. It sounds like it, right? Can you save our cat, Jacob? They're a Japanese band that I, I don't think they exist anymore, but they got a couple really sick albums. Save her from what? She's, she's having fun. She's knocking something around on that little shelf. I thought she was stuck because also you know, there's like a picture that's down. Dark Souls loves dregs. That's very true love sick. At someone's recommendation, I started reading. It was someone in the chat. Uh, someone's recommendation, I started reading. Um, Left-handed booksellers of London, I believe it's called. And uh, I've heard good things about that. Yeah, so far it's it's fun so far. I'm not like super far into it. I'm a couple chapters in, but um, it had gotten a word stuck in my head that I was bringing up yesterday, and I was like, and "You were like, I only know that from fantasy video games." Oh, the the word. Yeah. Palimpsest. Yeah, palimpsest. Well, I actually only know it because it's the name of a protest the hero album oh really is called palimpsest oh that's right that's, yeah you did say that and i was thinking about how it was appropriate because then you looked up what palimpsest meant and it was like a like a scroll or text document that had been written over to conserve space mm -hmm. and that whole album is about um american history oh. moments in american history that have been like rewritten and that is kind of covered over very applicable yeah so applicable name pretty yeah. cool that is cool i also think it's one of the most underrated like progressive metal albums you did get some excited people in the chat when you brought them up i just like totally missed i loved protest the hero on their first couple albums and then i completely missed that this one had come out until like two years after and then i listened and i was like this album's fucking incredible someone recommended no. gesu no kiwami otome we already like them oh, that band I love is them. so sick i love uh as as someone who used to play bass not very well but it made me appreciate bass i love their bass lines also their drummer is just sick yeah, I mean, everyone in that band is... Everyone's, like, so freaking an cool. out-of-their-mind musician. Yeah. We're so... We're, like, pretty close. I gotta focus. Positivity Boy said, I feel basic because I love Neutral Milk Hotel a lot. I love Neutral Milk Hotel a lot. It's fine to be basic. It's also not basic. They're like, they've got their acclaim for a reason. They put out one of the best and most influential like indie rock albums of all time. One of my favorite college humor skits that was ever done was, of course, Brennan. But it was the, uh, what was it called? The Defender of the Basic Bitch or something? <laughs> I just saw Ian in chat say Nickelback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Julia. Um, 
just, you know, it's another good Brennan rant where Brennan talks about the fact that things that are basic are basic because it means that it's just like so popular. It's just like, yeah, of course you like the thing. Like that yeah. doesn't mean anything. It's like ubiquitous. But it's just because like it's, it's good. People like, you know, this drink, like it's it's become like a basic thing to like, I think he was talking about like pumpkin spice lattes or something. And he was like, because it's delicious. Yeah. Like who cares? <laughs> like the thing. It's fine I, to be basic. I am always like pleasantly surprised when something that's really popular also turns out to be really good. Yeah. Or like within your tastes, I guess. Well, I think I'm, I'm thinking specifically of like Radiohead. Oh, yeah. Like, there was a long time in my teen years where I was like, I don't think Radiohead's that good. Everyone's always talking about them, blah, blah, blah. I don't think they're that great. It's whatever. Yeah. And then, like, in college, I finally listened to Radiohead, and I was like, God damn it. Right. They're one of the best rock bands of all time. It's like uh, the first time I saw... They're popular for good reason. Scream. Oh, yeah, the movie Scream. The movie Scream. I was like... Did you know this movie's really good? And Jacob was like, yes, why we're watching it. That's why it was so popular and like launched a whole genre. Yeah. Some things are just good. Some things are just good. You know what's not good? If I could, then I would. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty good in its own way. It's stuck in my head is what it is i will say it was in the category of songs much like the our lady peace song that came on the radio that i liked but not enough to buy their album but not enough to like turn off the station i mean yeah i think at some point i started turning it off because it was the only thing that friggin played yes joy joy it's not time yet it's soon sweetie it's almost time but not yet it's almost time but not yet Say, say something. She did. You cut her off. Let her speak. Yes, Joy Cat? Go ahead. Okay. What else? Yeah. Okay. It's good to know. Okay. okay. I mean, I hear what you're saying, but it's, it's still going to take the time it takes. You There's know? nothing we can really do about it. She's going to start like hitting cables. Oh, what is she hitting? hitting? She's hitting, ca hitting the camera cable. <laughs> she's hitting the camera cable. She's if like, this, this has got to be off. This has got to be off. It's going to be Joy. <laughs> <laughs> she's investigating the camera. Sniffing the camera. The camera. <laughs> yeah, go. Olive's right there. Go fight her. Go fight your sister. All right. I'm just, that's going to be an anomaly, but I want to show Joy. It's too close to her playtime. I know, little buddy. I know. I know. It's hard being a cat when you want to play and no one is playing with you. We promise she will be played with, though. We play with her throughout the day and always just before bed, which is why she screams at us. Don't want to miss a thing by Aerosmith played so much on the radio it made you car sick. Don't want that song to was like all over the place for a while, but yeah. it does remind me that we recently saw for the first time the Aerosmith music video for Love on an Elevator. Oh my god. And that's maybe one of the worst songs I've ever heard in my entire life. It is No Wow. Wow, the anomalies have taken over. Just when you thought you had it. Do I have time for another? I mean, you can do another if you want. We're going to have to go over, though. Is that okay with you? Missing object. I'm and so bad at the missing! And a painting. One more. This is the run. This is the run. This I'm, is the run. I'm really gonna. I'm really gonna focus this time. <sighs> Wait. 
what jacob you don't want to be living it up when you're going down i don't want to be living it up when you're going down that song only has two lyrics in it it sucks so bad he just goes love in an elevator living it up when you're going down over and over again for like four and a half minutes oh no you forgot about uh, yeah yeah <laughs> that's true that's that's part of it too that fucking song man I've determined that most Aerosmith songs... I do love Don't Want to Miss a Thing. I think that one is actually good. Um, I do think most Aerosmith songs are just like two lines, and their songs like mostly suck. Also, What's-His-Face scares me. I'm sorry. Steven Tyler. Steven Tyler. Is the song about fucking in an elevator? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is. And the music video, I will say to its credit, it features a very diverse cast of people uh, fucking in the elevator. <laughs> it, it shows you that anyone can fuck in an elevator. What you was know, the, people um, of all ages, all stripes are welcome. What was the other music video we saw? And it was on like the 20th anniversary or something. It was like 20th or 30th anniversary music video for this thing. And I was oh, like, it was, what is uh, the, happening? The Doors 50th anniversary Writers on the Storm music yes! video. And it looked like it was made by like a high schooler. With an AI generator. Yeah. Gotta love her, man. Because it's just like a lady in like a skimpy cowboy outfit. Surfing on a motorcycle. Doing this. While trippy stuff goes by. Yeah, and then, I don't know, it's just a lot of colors. I have not been paying attention. Focus. <laughs> Steven Tyler looks like he could eat his own head. This is the first time chat. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. You're a C ward. I was going to say earlier that I think that Steven Tyler activated some people's, like, vor kink. Yeah, because I wouldn't be surprised about that. There's a that. lot of him holding a microphone and like coming at the camera with yeah. his mouth like really wide. Yeah. And that had to activate something in someone. Oh, I'm sure. I'm certain. <laughs> he got that evil frog face. I know. And Liv Tyler's beautiful. Someone said, wow, that Liv Tyler's his daughter. I like Liv Tyler. Asterix. I don't know much about her. Sometimes I'll say that I like a celebrity, and I mean with the limited knowledge that I know of them. And then I'll find out later that that person's actually horrible. And I'm like, yeah. I didn't know. I don't know everything about everyone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Now Olive is here. Oh. She saved Frodo. That's all I know. <laughs> and that's all I need to know. She gave up immortal life to be with Aragorn. Is which, that not enough? To be fair, if you're going to give up immortal life for any one human in those movies... You make it Aragorn. You make it Aragorn. That's the only one who's worth it. Stools, usually over here. Peanut butter. Empty peanut butter jars. Three. She's also Bruce Willis's daughter. What does that mean? Yeah, what does that mean? I don't think she is also Bruce Willis's daughter. Can you oh, elaborate? you mean in Armageddon? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? How is that possible? <laughs> in the movie. It's like Steven Tyler and Bruce Willis. I never knew. Good for I them. I never knew. Who could have guessed this? Love does find a way. That's beautiful. Speaking of celebrity relations, th this one's not going to be for really anyone, but <laughs> we were watching like a really old shitty horror movie type thing and it features Clint Howard in it and Clint Howard's in all sort of old shitty horror movies, but I didn't realize Clint Howard is Ron Howard's oh, yeah. brother. And like Ron Howard's like, I'm like one of the most legendary, well-known directors of all time. And Clint Howard's like, I'm in the background of every 90s, of comedy every movie. 80s, 90s horror movie. And my oh, hair is doing movie, yeah. something funny. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, he's so also in every Ron everyone. Howard movie. I, I guess that makes sense. It was the Wraith with Charlie Sheen. How did you know it was the Wraith? Oh my God. <laughs> That's wild that you picked it out because he's in a bunch of movies in that era. Yeah. What a weird movie that was. It was a movie about like a gang of uh, a gang of thugs that steal people's cars. Well, they force people to race them and then take their car. Yeah. And then vengeance is exacted upon them by Charlie Sheen in like a Power Rangers outfit. <laughs> As the wraith. As the wraith. Missing stuff in bathroom. You're right. Thank you. I didn't check the peanut butter jars. Ron Howard was the little kid in The Music Man, right? I don't know. Was he? Sing me a song, you're a music man. I was going to go a, the different way. I was going to go the tiny dancer route. Marry the music man. Sing me a song, you're a tiny dancer. Ballerina, <laughs> you must have seen her. Dancing in the sand. There's a crazy video of him just like coming up with that song or like playing that song for the first time in his apartment with like his friends there. And his notes for that song are like written on like a post it. It was pretty good. Dude's talented. Elton John? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> but has he tried putting words to uh, on Blue? Ron Howard's dad is named Rance Howard. Rance? And his mom is named Jean Spiegel Howard. Spiegel. Gene Spiegel. I like the name Gene. Kind of. Or Rance. Rance is like you messed up saying Lance. Yeah. Short for rancid. <laughs> I a don't foul like. Foul man. There's so many names where there's like a more common iteration of that name that when I get the when I get the less common iteration of that name, I'm like annoyed by it. Like Rance. Yeah. I say annoyed. I have to correct really. Ansta in a very important way. Okay, do it. Ansta said Gene Spiegel is a dope name, but spelled Spiegel the way you would spell it if you were sane, which is not how real Gene Spiegel's name is spelled. How's it spelled? It is spelled S-P-E-E-G-L-E. -E -E. Spiegel. It's like phonetic. <laughs> it's like It's like phonetic. It's spelled like she's a, a creature in, like, Fraggle Rock. <laughs> Spiegel. <laughs> she's like a Snoopy sibling. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, I'm seeing a pretty important question here on, on the people also ask. Okay. Which is, did Ron Howard get along with Andy Griffith? <laughs> Who's ready for the answer to this one? Okay. Here's what Ron Howard really thought of Andy Griffith. Okay, can't oh, wait to hear this. It's a YouTube video. Freaking hot just, goss. Just tell me yes or no. <laughs> no, you have to watch like a whole video. I don't want like, to watch the, the video in the history. It's gonna be that freaking how to pronounce correctly guy being like, the Howard has been in such movies like. The top comment, <laughs> the top comment on this YouTube video is both liberal actors. <laughs> I could care less, but always liked both actors. This show is one of the best ever. It's still better than anything on TV today. <laughs> okay. Imagine thinking that the Andy Griffith show is better than anything on TV today. 
I don't know. Have they seen Blue's Clues? The entire like spectrum of available content to us today, and you're like, Andy Griffith is better than any of it. Here's a question for you, Jacob. What do you think is the best show you've ever seen? The best show I've ever seen? Yeah. It's a it, really good like question. Not like your favorite, but like the best. I don't know, man. I usually don't think about stuff in those like metrics. Because like I don't have like a favorite movie. I'm not saying favorite. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to like think like like objectively the best show I think I've ever seen. I mean, it's got to be Andy Griffith. <laughs> <laughs> that man was right. That episode where Andy Griffith's like, now. Barney, we gotta go down to the river. I hear there's a salmon down a there. We gotta fish. go catch a catfish. And Barney's like, "Good with the bill, bill, bill. Oh, Andy, I'm tripped and fell in a barrel." Joy just said uh, that episode is like, rain. I cried when I watched that. It was so beautiful. I really, it really resonated with me. I don't have an answer for your question though. Okay. I wish I did. Well, you had come up with another thought experiment that you had asked me the other day, and I still think about it. Oh, yeah. This is, a, this is a good one, chat. Chat, get your thinking caps on. Okay. Someone, by the way, before you get going, someone said that they think the best show is The Simpsons because it's so long, and I think it's not, like, length of show. It's, like, however long that show was on, it had, like, the consistent quality. Yeah, which The Simpsons does not have. Unfortunately. Although, apparently, it's gone back to, like, being pretty good. I've heard this. Yes. Sorry. Your question, your hypothetical, or not hypothetical. My hypothetical is, what do you think is objectively the most fun sport to watch if you take out of account any of your own personal preferences of what sports you like and this can include any olympic sport as well like if you put it in front of someone who's never seen a sport before what sport do you think they're going to have the most fun watching <laughs> roller derby i say this as someone who's been to many a roller derby bout um, because my sister-in-law did roller derby. When you don't understand roller derby, it is not entertaining. You're just like, what is happening? Yeah, I feel like that's the thing you got to take into consideration. Like, if you put someone in front of it who knows nothing, will they be able to enjoy it? I should say I like roller derby. I yeah, don't want to yeah. be like shit on roller derby. It's great. A lot of people are saying hockey. I think that's the most said answer. I said hockey as well. And I, I do get that. It's I like don't, high action. My argument was that um, as someone who's not like a hockey fan, but like I enjoy it when I watch it, it has the same issue to me that soccer has, which is that it's so fast paced mm. that I, I like start spacing out. By the way, I started watching um, women's uh, British, sorry, I don't know what it's called. I think it's called WFA, Women's Football Association. Anyway, I'm an Arsenal fan through and through. Uh, but I started watching the women's team, and I watched a great game. If you're looking for a good women's soccer game to start off on, Arsenal versus Chelsea was very fun. But also, I'm biased. Also, Blackstenia's freaking rules. Wow, bias acknowledged. Yeah. I have to admit it. I love an Arsenal. I was going to say one of the sports I had argued for was the, the ski jump. Because mm -hmm. I know every time I've been like watching the Winter Olympics with people, the ski jump comes on. And like it's one of those that you start and you're like, every jump looks amazing. But then as it goes on, you're like, you start to become like a mini expert. Yeah. And like they'll jump and be like, I don't think that one's far enough. Didn't have enough oomph off the ramp. Right. everyone like gets into each jump you know yeah and i think because it's got like these little individual pockets of event it's like easy to follow oh competition tag yeah that i do think is one of the most exciting things to watch that is fun to watch it's yeah. really intense um 
I think also in the same vein as the ski jump, I think that um, downhill slalom, like the really fast one, that's the slalom, right? Yeah. And that one's crazy. That one is cool. The wipeouts on that, I'm like, I, I would not, I would simply never get up again. Is American Ninja Warrior a sport? Sure. I guess it kind of is, right? I mean, like, what constitutes a sport? Yeah. Ninja Warrior is definitely really fun to watch. It is fun. I saw some love for uh, women's soccer, by the way, in chat. Just want to acknowledge it. Some people were excited for Sam Kerr. Sam Kerr is awesome. She's so freaking good. Seen a lot of people talking about curling as well. I always get into curling. Curling is one that like you hear about it. You're like, that sounds stupid. And then you start watching it and you're like, I'm highly invested. Because that's one where everyone looks really intense and then it's really fast pace. And then you're like, you're making the call. You can't see where it's going exactly because the camera's on the, uh, what is it called? The stone. And you're like, that's, that's not going to do it. That's not going to do it. It's doing it. It's doing it. Yeah. And it's very easy to brush, tell. Brush! Brush! You're to, yelling with them. Yeah. To tell what's going on. It's very easy to tell. Yeah. You'll like understand the whole sport if you watch like one round of it. By the way, if anyone sees anything they want to point out, please put it in chat. I mean, about the game. I want to pass this one. I want to end on a win. Love it in the elevator. Living it up and you're going down. I heard something weird. My ears. What else would you have heard it with? <laughs> Got her. Question, Jacob. Yeah. I think I've asked you this before, but I never remember the answer. Okay. When you hear sounds, mm -hmm. would you say that you feel them in your ears? depends on the sound like that noise i like feel it vibrating in my ears yeah that type of noise i feel okay in my ear because i brought that up to my mom once and she was like that's the most insane thing you've ever said julia plant plant and lobby lobby oh thank you Well, like bass, bass, like that, I feel like bouncing around in my ear canal. Um, bass, of course, I feel it like I feel it in my chest. I feel it like in my head. And I think everyone does that. Um, office monitor. Office monitor. Office monitor. What, 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 what? This one's always on, I think. That one's always on. Um... But I feel like sometimes I'll feel a noise before I hear the noise, depending on how uh, uh, quiet it is or far away. One got small, office monitor too small. Oh, uh, this? Is it too small? I think it's normal. I think it's normal. Pretty sure it's normal. All right, chat, you're off. You're off duty. You're off duty. Go get some rest. Go take five. <laughs> You're not fit for duty. I got a question for everyone. Mm -hmm. Do y'all ever get the muscle like underneath your jaw, does it ever like- Right here. Like lock up. Like sometimes I'll yawn and this muscle will like lock up and I like can't open my mouth and it's like incredibly painful. I had gotten that for the first time the other day. It hurts like hell. All right, I'm glad all you, a lot of you have experienced this. It's like when I felt it the other day, it felt like someone was pulling on the muscle.
It freaking sucks, man. It was like a Charlie horse, but under my jaw. I've woken up multiple times to Charlie horses, and I have to say that's the worst. It's like the rudest way to wake up. I don't think it's TMJ. No, TMJ is here. I it like think. only happens when I yawn. Sometimes. I have TMJ. Like I pull the muscle too far or something, and then it like cramps up really, really painfully. I have TMJ, and you can hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, stop it. It's every time I open my mouth. It's because I grind my teeth a lot. I developed a really bad TMJ and it lasted a couple of years. Oh, my oh God. sir. What the fuck? Absolutely cheated. 100% cheated, robbed, and stolen. You did not deserve that. You deserved a win and a dub. All I wanted was a win. We don't have time to do another one, no. unfortunately. But that was literally, like, stolen. <sighs> He didn't even give you enough time to, to get him. No, I clicked him and it was like processing or whatever. That's BS. Anyway, I, I'm gonna finish my thought. Yeah, go for or it. Or what I was saying, which is that I had TMJ for a long time and I had developed it like kind of out of nowhere and I was confused about it. And then um, I, um, broke up with someone and then for the first time in years i did not have that feeling in my jaw and i was like oh <laughs> that was the issue that was the issue i see and I'm also like my back detected. start stopped hurting i used to get like really bad uh stress i've been having them again lately but i used to wake up every single weekend with really bad stress like neck tension headaches and after I broke up with that person, my TMJ went away and this went away. Except both of those things are back right now, but whatever. Are you, what are you trying to tell me? It's not you. What it's are you not, trying to say to me right now? It's not you. I'm feeling like there's some hints being dropped at me right now. No, you, you are good. Well, this is the end of the stream. Yeah. But we're going to be tomorrow night on Drawfee stream. So please tune into that. Yeah. We'll, we'll be back. For the first stream of 2024, maybe it'll be a Drawfee Awards stream <laughs> if I put that together tomorrow beforehand. Yeah. Um, yeah, I will read subs as well once I'm done saying saying what I got to say. Um, I'll probably just get in your chair and do it. Yeah, I can start playing with the cats and start stuff. Start playing with these cats. Look at them. They're, they're feral. Them. One's here, one's there. I live! All right. I thought she was going to meow, but instead she just... Joy, can you move? Miss Aniv! Go somewhere. Miss Aniv! Not, don't go there. Oh my God. That's where I need to go. Joy's here. Come on. <sighs> Why? Okay. See you tomorrow on the stream. Time to read some subs, baby. Let's go. My pants are hiked up. Julia's pants are hiked up. Let's see what we got. We got subs from the state of Arizona, Fickle Penguin, Chimimel, Ferret Frenzy, an anonymous gifter. Tancap12, the letter S, another anonymous gifter. Design Monkey, Gypsy Snarf. Shouldn't, shouldn't be using that word, apologies. Sass Raptor, the Argent Alpaca, Dr. Thundercock. <laughs> Maybe shouldn't be using that word either. Ninifar, Sid is not vicious, Peepo Boose, Composite Ghost, Hannah Dragneel 8, Anna Carolyn, Bo Possum, Primordial Moss, Science Side, Artie Artfart, Crinkle Bones, Bell of the Bog, Virus Shroom, Jar of Pickle Jellyfish Feet, Roomful of Twinks, T Gremlin, Empirate 28, Silver to Black, Your Nightly Ghost, A Crane Art, Rosiaceous, Bonjour Monabine, Cobalt, 
Hydra, Mime Town, The Wicked at Rest, Pistols O'Brien, Nerd is the Word, H. Mostel, Rainbow Rice 98, Trash Cannibal Lecter, Miracle Mags, Yurt Gert, Cake, Dark Winged Angel, Flying on a Pig, Daima Onichan, Joe Crazyface, Gifted 5 Subs. Thank you so much, Joe Crazyface. Yurt Gert, Smuggy McSmugface, Wicked Me, Is Lady Hawk. Hello, delicious friend, Tiefling Fen. Professor Archetype gave out five gifted subs. Thank you, Professor Archetype. Cav Howdy, Sea Monster Pizza, Sand on the Breeze, Toria Tots, Gradient Jump Scare, Neil Armstrong Bad, Gigi Lindsay, Sleepy Sea Slug, Professor Rad, Art Cat 2 Still Artin, Look an Elephant, Yurt Gert gifted five subs. Thank you so much, Yurt Gert. A Mimasa, Paladin Bubbles, Da Giggles gave out 10 gifted subs. Thank you, Da Giggles, so much. Yeah. Suave Peanut, Honey Crema, Random Cat JC, Inkara 1010, Homesick, Dorkalotl, Author Amalgam, Azora Storm, Oracle Machine, Boy Howdy 123, Roshki Babashki, Change My Mr. Jacob, Ebby Poop, Straw Bebbies, Squantos Revenge, Tiefling Fen, It's Kitsu Bug, Heart Veil, Play It Life, Coyote Teeth, Avant Garde Bard, Redwood Seas, Mechatrans Rigs, Drewski Ski Ski, Malicious Mischief, Cyclocentric, Zaddy Field Recruiter, Awesome Kristen, Luna Nvidia, Augie Froggy, Slurry G, Peter Pan, Forlorn Knight, Bob and the Goblin, Slorts, Milk Leg Scoop, Princess Ring Pop, Unicycle Hippo, Tevil Pevic. Sorry. Get my drink. Calamity CC, Quick Step Cat, Hooker Queen, Joe Crazy Face, Clark Clark Clark, Mayday Govanek, Fire Up the Ace, Cyber Lump, Suave Peanut, Rocket Brain Engineer, Juco Lantern, 12 Cats in a Dressing Gown, Gina Bish, Crayon Bad Boy, Rabbit Traps, Midnight Child 05. And now we're going back to the top, baby. Back to the top. Sunset Ember. Johnny Guitar, Rainbow, Pisto Epistocles, Rock Prod gave out five gifted subs. Thank you, Rock Prod. Realistic 16. And that is all. Thank you all so much for the support. We really appreciate it as always. Thanks for hanging out with us. Also, we're like so close to hitting 100,000 subscribers on our YouTube VOD channel. We are, yes. If you're not subscribed to Secret Sleepover on YouTube. Please do it. We get a fun plaque. Um, Kekona or Sesona said I didn't hear my name. I didn't see it in my feed, but I'll thank you anyways. So please thank you. go Appreciate subscribe it. on the VOD channel. Yeah, please go subscribe on the VOD channel. Let's hit that 100K. And uh, we'll see you all tomorrow night on Drawfee. Thanks, everyone. Bye.